Bowl champ, Chris Canty. Good to see you, brother. How are you? Chris, how do you decide when you wear your ring and when you don't wear your ring? I only wear it the week before the Super Bowl and the week after the Super Bowl. Oh. Just to remind folks I got one. Yes. But, I mean, it's, so, it's so gaudy. You can't yes. wear it uh -oh. all the time. So gaudy. I'm with you. He got a gold jacket and a Hall of Fame ring. I think people will put that yeah, higher on the scale. Chris, he Super walks into work with the gold jacket every day. We put oh, him see, in a I different I didn't know outfit. that. I didn't see that. That's not true. I didn't true. see that. That's not true. That would be a boss move, though. Much I would love, endorse Cece. that move, Cece. Much love. Give me that phone. No, no, no. Give me that phone. <laughs> now, I'm going to tease you like a little kid. Now, what you going to do? All right? Wise guy. How's that going for you? We love you. Lance Swan, Hall of Famer. We love you. All right, let's talk about the NFL draft. Sam Darnold threw yesterday to rainy USC Pro Day, seemingly put on a great performance, so much so that our Joel Klatt made quite the bold statement. Take a listen to this. He had one of the most, I would say, best pro days I've seen in a long time. Coming away from today, and this is the earliest I've said this in this process, the New York Giants are on the clock because I think the number one pick was totally solidified today. Well, Chris, that's a pretty bold wow. statement from Joel Klatt. So should the Giants approach the draft in a new mode now? In a win-now mode? Yeah, basically, because they know that Sam Darnold is uh, probably going one. Well, I think the Giants need to take a long-term approach on being able to fix 16 because they had 13 losses last season for a reason. You fired your head coach and general manager for a reason. So you have to reset the franchise. And when you have this kind of draft capital, you have to make sure that you get this right. Now, Dave Gettleman said something right after they hired Pat Shermer a couple of days afterward. He said, you never want to be in quarterback hell. You don't want to take a guy just to take a guy. You've got to have a conviction about that pick. And when you have the second overall pick, you want to be taking a Hall of Fame caliber player. So the Giants got to make sure that they get this one right. I think they don't need to go to the direction of a running back. I think they need to focus on somebody that can be an impact player for the next 10 to 12 years. If it's not a quarterback, look at your options in terms of trading down or who's going to be available so you get the best value. Well, that's what I wanted to get into you with is let's just say we, we had the Giants war room bugged and they have decided the only quarterback we like is Sam Darnold. He's gone at one. We are definitely not taking a quarterback. If that's because I think you and I both believe they should take a quarterback. Yes. Too, if there's one you like. But let's say they decide we're not taking a quarterback. If that's the case, then I think the right move is not Saquon Barkley, is not Minka Fitzpatrick, is not Bradley Chubb. I think the right move is trading that pick. Agreed. I think that when you've got, if you are not drafting a quarterback and you are saying, we're trying to go for it. We think last year injuries ruined us, bad coaching ruined us, Eli's going to be better, Odell's going to be back, the defensive players are going to get back to the level they were. And you look at Buffalo, that is clearly just trying to move up. They now have the 12th pick and the 22nd pick to go along with the 53rd, the 56th, and the 65th pick. They are doing all of the moves they've made so they can move up to acquire a quarterback. I I would hold an auction for that number two pick rather than draft Saquon Barkley if I'm not drafting a quarterback because I think that is where they can get the most value out of their situation. I think there's a couple of places that you look if the Giants decide to trade down. I think you look at Denver at five because they may let it be known that they're trying to get in position to get a quarterback. If you're the Giants, that still puts you in play mm -hmm. for a Quentin Nelson or a Brad Chubb or even a Saquon Barkley, although I don't love it. But I, I'm with you. I think you try to do the dance with Brandon Bean, general manager, who Dave Gettleman has a relationship with from their time in Carolina. You try to get 12, you get 22, and then all of a sudden you're in position to maybe get the first rounder from next season. So if you can get three first round picks and maybe another mid round pick to move back to 12, I think that's the play if you don't have a conviction on one of those quarterbacks. Based on the way the board is, looking at the players that are highest ranking players, the Giants, this is not the year that you want to be in the number two slot. All right? The Giants have made it public. They're going with Eli Manning. That, that don't mean they're going with Eli in 2018. That means they're going with Eli for the next couple years. So at number two, with the quarterbacks dominating the top 10 picks, with three of them being in the top 10, it's not advantageous for them to be in the number two spot. So it's a bad year for them to be there. But let's not forget, the Giants got some good football players. Now, they're the team that they, they are kind of retinkering. I'm not going to say rebuilding, but before the season, we thought they were a playoff team. We still think they're a playoff team. And if they are a playoff team, I would try to trade back and be able to get additional players because that is a roster that needs offensive line help. They do need a running back, and you can move back and still get a very good running back and do that. I don't believe there's an answer at number two. When they've announced that they're going with Eli Manning, that number two can't be a quarterback because you're wasting the value of the pick for the next couple of years. 
look what the D Dallas Cowboys got out of Ezekiel Elliott, a game changer, as we call, a force multiplier, a guy who, when he's playing, he really makes everyone around him better. You don't think it'll be too tempting for the Giants to look at Saquon Barkley and wonder what if? It's a perfect marriage when Zeke was available because they had Tony Romo as a veteran quarterback, but they had spent draft capital to build up that offensive line, which was one of the most dominant offensive lines. They had a thousand yard rusher before, the, before they got Zeke. Mm -hmm. Now Zeke is a special player, so it's a perfect marriage and the timing was perfect when Zeke was available. The Giants don't have a, a dominant offensive line. Now they, they could, the running back can still be effective, but it's not going to the same situation as Zeke when he went to Dallas. You can't take full advantage of Saquon Barkley's skill set with the offensive line that the New York Giants had. Okay. That's why I don't see yeah, the value in taking a running back at that okay. position. Yeah. Plus, when you start talking about top-end production from a running back, you're going to get five or six seasons of that, and then where are you at? I don't know that the Giants are in position now that they're a running back away from competing for a championship. Okay. I think they got to address the offensive line. Like you said, CC, it's hard for a running back to be good with a suspect offensive line. See Todd Gurley a couple of years ago mm -hmm. with, the, with the Rams. So I think that's got to be the focus for Dave Gettleman. Continue to try to develop this team, build inside out, which is his football philosophy, but it takes a long-term approach. And also take advantage of the climate right now. Man, people are crazy about these young quarterbacks. Around this time, we forget the guys we talked about last year with evaluation. We get crazy about the guys. Oh, man, I want Donald. Oh, I want Rosen. Man, take advantage of the climate to get multiple picks to be able to help your team. I just want to expand on one thing you said earlier. And we should mention, by the way, the Giants did spend a bucket of money on Nate Solder. So they, they think they've got their left tackle. But the rest of the offense, they, was, they weren't just a left tackle away no. from a good offensive <laughs> no. line. But when you say Denver, the Denver trade's really intriguing to me. Because if you trade with Denver and move to five, you know, if you trade with Buffalo, you move all the way to 12, you miss out on basically the blue, blue chip guys. If you trade with Denver, you know quarterback's going one, quarterback's going two to Denver, mm -hmm. quarterback's going three to the Jets. You're sitting there at five. You are either going to get the top offensive player on your board or the top defensive yeah, player on your board. Yeah, same situation Indy's in when they switch with the Jets. Exactly right. Like, you're in, a, you're in a great spot because you're trading only three spots down, and you know in that spot two and three will be quarterbacks. That's why it could be very attractive for him. All right, Chris Kenny, stick around. Coming up, are the Cowboys falling behind the rest of the NFC East? Talk about